Hey everyone, today I thought I would go through the process of stripping down a Boker Quaken and anodizing it. So we'll get into the dry portion of it first, and that's just the disassembly. This is a tuxedo version of the Boker Quaken. It's exclusive to Blade HQ. And what's unique about this variant of this flipper knife is that almost every component of it is made of titanium, including the pocket clip. And then if you're not familiar with the knife, it is a flipper on ball bearings, IKBS ball bearings to be exact. And that's going to be the most annoying part of the disassembly. Everything else is very easy, but the ball bearings are loose, they're not caged. So, it is going to be, um, they kind of fly all over the place. Um, but at first it's not too bad because they use like a lubricant in there, like an oil or grease, and that kind of holds them in place. So I just took out these two screws that hold the carbon fiber scale onto the, uh, the actual liner or frame, which is titanium. So there's a the carbon fiber. All right, the same thing on the other side here. It's good to just set everything aside and make sure you know what goes to what. It's kind of obvious here, the screws for the carbon fiber scales, they're shorter. And the screws for the actual pocket clip are longer. And there's only two of them, so it's easy to differentiate. But there's the four screws for the scales. The scales over here for the carbon fiber. Now you're left with the bolster which is also titanium. So there's the pivot screw we're going to loosen up here. It's kind, of, it's kind of tight in there. I think that you might use some sort of a Loctite, which is good. And, oh yeah, for the Torx I'm using a T6 for all of the smaller screws, and this is a Torx T8 for the pivot. You could probably even fit in like a T9 if you wanted a little more snug. Yeah, Loctite. Blue Loctite, that's, that's good, that's what they should be using. A lot of really good manufacturers don't use Loctite, and as we all know, that gets a little irritating because then we have to do it ourselves. Some people have asked me to do a video on Loctiting, but it's so simple that I didn't want to waste the whole video. But basically what you do is you take the threading on the screw here, and you would clean it off. You would you probably want to use like a degreaser, or maybe even like a dish soap. And what you do is just make sure any grease that's on there, any oil that's on there, any lubricant that's on there is all cleaned off. And then after that's done, after you scrub it, I take a alcohol pad or just alcohol on a paper towel or something and I just clean it off. And then I make sure I just set it down. And then you can use Loctite, which is, there's all different kinds. The best stuff to use on a knife is the blue stuff. They have red, they have brown, they have purple, they got all sorts of kinds. And purple is actually a little weaker than the blue. Is this the blue? No, that's heavy duty red. You don't want to use that unless you want it to be like a permanent bond or weld. Um, because you're going to have to torch it or heat it up significantly to, uh, to get it to break loose. What you're going to want to use is the blue. This is what works best for me if you do it right. And it's simple to do it right, it really is. You simply clean it off, like I said, the, the threaded area, and then you could uh, unscrew this and just apply very lightly, like a drop or two, onto the head or onto the screws. I kind of just spread it around. And then once it's done, I let it set. I wait a couple minutes until it gets a little less viscous and it starts thickening up a little bit. And then I screw it back in. Um, and then I let it sit for about 24 hours. I don't flip the knife, I don't do anything. I let it harden. And then you're done. So I figure that's all you really need to know about lock tightening. Um, the biggest thing is let it be, let it set, so that way it has a hard, uh, time to harden. A lot of times when people do it wrong is they don't clean things enough. 
and there's still oil on there and it kind of dilutes, or reduces the efficiency of the Loctite. So again, it's very short screws just like we saw that are used to hold on the carbon fiber. And these are the titanium bolsters. These are two more things we're going to be anodizing. Okay, and let's put these screws over here. All right, cool. So we have the two bolsters that we'll be anodizing. We have the pocket clip that we'll be anodizing. And I, I've done this before, and the pocket clip is not 6AL4V titanium. If it is, it's got some sort of you know, inconsistency as far as quality goes, which is okay, it's just a titanium uh, clip. But I want you to know if you are going to anodize this, it's going to be kind of tricky to try to actually get as much vibrant, vibrance in the color uh, or the same consistency of your color with the pocket clip as you would the rest of the material here, like the bolsters. So, um, if I hold this together, I can probably rock this blade out. Um, actually, you know what I'll do first is I'll take all these out. This is holding in the titanium backspacer here. And there's, uh, oh yeah, those are small. I think that might fit. Uh, I don't need something smaller than that. So smaller than a, a T6, I'm probably going to need like a T, do I have it, T4? I think I do. Oh yeah, yeah, that's a T4. So T4 Torx to get these little guys out, to get the backspacer out, which is going to be the last step of being able to separate and, and take down this knife. Alright. Looks like there's another little post in here, it's probably steel, that goes through the back spacer and both liners. Little guys are kind of a pain in the ass. This is just the liner separating. I'm just wiggling back and forth there. It just came off. There we go. And that's this is the um, the lock side of the liner. Okay, all titanium, if you're not familiar with how these all work, there's a little relief cut right in here and that allows uh, there to be tension or they can bend the, the metal, in this case titanium, so that way there's like a springiness, a tension, so it'll automatically pop underneath the bottom of the blade tank to lock the blade open. Um, the problem when you see just solid titanium like this, and a lot of you already know this, is you, you want a, a steel lock bar insert, kind of like what you see on this knife here. It's titanium, but there's an insert with steel in there, so that way when it locks underneath the blade tang, it's steel on steel contact. When you have something like this, you're going to get a little bit of blade stick, or lock stick rather, when the blade is open. Um, but that's alright. There's a little ball bearing right there. We can just, we're going to want to take this, this uh, pivot out, because this is steel, that's the blade stop. And you're going to want to take that out, because when you're anodizing, there cannot be any other exposed steel, or I'm sorry, metal, that's not a conductive metal. So, um, steel, for example, cannot be in there. Um, this is a steel ball bearing. We're going to cover that up with some nail polish in a little bit. And all of these little holes and screws, we're going to put nail polish in there as well and cover those up because one of the first steps of the anodization process is etching. And when you put it into an etching solution, it actually removes the outermost material or surface area. And you don't want to change tolerances within the knife. You know, this is polished in here even though it's all lubed up. You don't want to you know, dull that up, otherwise the action of the blade will be less smooth. You don't want to make the actual holes for the screws uh, larger by removing material. The blade, I'm sorry, the screws may not fit. So. You want to maintain all of the tolerances, so we'll be covering all that up. But here's one part, so now we have four different pieces we're going to be anodizing. We have the lock side liner, 
the two bolsters, and the pocket clip. So now we just got to get the blade out. And this is what I was talking about. Here's the blade. This little channel right here is where it rotates and where this steel pin used to sit inside. And when it closes, it stops the blade, and when it opens, it stops the blade. It's an internal stop pin. So that's what we took out. Now you're noticing that all of these little tiny ball bearings are staying put. One, there's a channel in there, which the earlier models of this blade did not have, so that was good, good on Boker to do that. But they also have lubricant in there that's kind of holding them in. And these little ball bearings, the little pains in the ass, they actually one slipped out right there and it's just sticking there. And uh, they're tiny, so you want to, what I recommend is having like a little tray or something to put this in. I have a little side project going on here, so I'm just going to put these right here in case they decide to fall out. Um, and that's good, none of the ball bearings fell out anywhere. So now we just want to finish taking off this back spacer. Let's see if we can do that. There we go. Little screws, they don't want to come out. There we go. Cool. So these longer screws went all the way through this frame and through the back spacer here. I'll set those aside. Those are actually even longer than the screws for the pocket clip. So those are the longest screws. And again, they go through for this uh, back spacer here. Use a punch. There we go. All right, so titanium back spacer. And again, the same concept when you're anodizing. I don't want this big chunk of steel sticking through it because that will prevent the anodization process. So I want to get that out of there if I can. Yes. I got a hammer around here somewhere, but I don't feel like digging it up. Actually, that worked perfectly. Real professional here. <laughs> Whatever works, right? Trying to get a smaller punch. That thing does not want to come out. There we go. It's a caveman method. You just find something blunt and just keeps smacking it. All right, so there's the, the other um, post, same exact size and dimension as the the one that's the blade stop, so you don't have to worry about mixing these two up. Alright, got all of our hardware out of the way. Cool, so now we have the other side of the liner, which is also titanium. And then we have the backspacer, which is titanium as well. And both the backspacer and the pocket clip are made of some other uh, composition or different type of titanium. It is titanium, but it just doesn't anodize with the same consistency. Or as, and again, it's just not as vibrant of a color that you're going to get out of these. So, just a little side note: you may decide you don't want to anodize them. But um, so now we have this all stripped down. This is all the material we're going to be using, and it's just a step-by-step -step process of etching all of this material putting it into a uh, cleaning solution, and then push it, putting it into the anodization solution. So um, we'll move over to that next and show you what that solution is. Okay, we're back with the anodization station just further down the workbench, and it is a disaster area. It is totally messy because I always have a ton of projects going on at the same time. So this is how I have it set up. <clears throat> I have it labeled Danger Multi-Etch. Um, do whatever you want, just make sure that if you're going to have anybody else in your work area that it's labeled that this is dangerous. Multi-etch 
is a very toxic chemical. Um, so that's what I use, multi-etch. You can Google it and buy it in all sorts of different places. But that's what I use to strip down the outer layer and get anything off of the outer surface of the titanium that we're going to be anodizing. The next thing I wanted to point out is I use titanium um, wire, and I'll explain why in a minute, but I have different titanium wires here. So what we'll do first is we'll get, um, we'll get this uh, backspacer etched, okay? And what we're going to do is we're just going to hook it just like that on the titanium hook, and we're going to open up the etching solution, multi-etch. And it's not like acid, so if you get, get it on your hand or something, it's not going to just burn you immediately, but you just want to go rinse it off. Don't get it in your eyes. Don't ingest it. But we're just going to let it sit in here for a little bit. Cover it back up. I'm going to let it sit. I mean, you can let it sit for as long as you want. The longer it sits in there, the longer it's going to etch. I'm going to probably let it sit for an hour. There's a cold way of doing this, like you're seeing here, and then there's a hot. And I'm not going to get into all that. Long story short, you heat up the multi-etch, and it etches the material much faster. It's a much volatile situation, much more volatile, so you have to make sure that you're wearing eye protection and you do it in a safe area. You can read up on it. I just do it simple and uh, less risk that way and it's more stable that way and it just takes some more time. Like I said, I have other projects so I can, I can just let that etch. Um, you can throw everything in at the same time if you want and let it etch, but I'm just going to do that again with the pocket clip here. All right, so we'll throw that in there to etch as well. Okay, the reason why I didn't put these in is because I gotta use um, nail polish. This is my favorite color, I'm just kidding. But um, use the nail polish to cover up some of these holes and uh, it'll protect it so that way the etching solution doesn't get through to the areas we don't want etched. So the next step is to have clean rinsing water. And this is, uh, you're gonna wanna use uh, distilled water. And what you're gonna do is um, it's very, very fast process. You want to dip it in and let it rinse for a while. It can soak, but tra transitioning it from the etching solution into the next solution has to be quick. Same goes for the rinsing to the anodization solution. It has to be very fast. The reason why is as soon as the water or you know the rinsing solution, the etch, as soon as oxygen is is um, reaching the outer layer of the titanium you instantly get um, a barrier forming over the outer layer of the titanium that's going to prevent you from anodizing as effectively. So it's, it's, you want the, the etchant solution to be coated over the material itself. And that's why you're going to bring it over very quickly so it doesn't just dry off and allow oxygen to get to it. So very fast back and forth. So once we rinse it for a little bit, you can just let it sit there and rinse. Then we're going to put it in the anodizing solution, and that is again distilled water with TSPPF, phosphate free. You don't want phosphate in there. But what I decided to use <clears throat> is this because it's a very highly concentrated, uh, almost like a laundry detergent, or a, or a, I don't know if it's a laundry detergent, it's an A detergent, it's a form of soap. So other people have used just really strong dish soap, whatever works for you. I find this to work the best for me and it lasts the longest. This is a I, uh, a one pound, 16 ounce box that I got for very, very cheap and it's, it's lasted me for, I mean, probably about 50 different anodization jobs and it's like still half full. So this goes a long way. Uh, very strong and I just sprinkle a good amount of that in there. I think I put like a, about a cup to, I think that's about two gallons, maybe a gallon and a half of distilled water. Um, yeah, let's see, this is 2.1 gallons, so yeah, probably almost like one and, you know, three-fourths gallons, something like that, of distilled water in there. So inside the, the actual anodization bath, I have a sheet of titanium, okay? One sheet of titanium, you want it to be roughly the size, same size or larger in surface area as the item you will be uh, anodizing. And this is just a barrier. It's like a plastic screen. You can, get, you can use whatever you want. It's a barrier just to make sure there's something in between that titanium, that sheet of titanium, and whatever item I'm going to be putting in. 
Um, if you're really careful, you don't need that. It's just a safety precaution because while current is running through all of this, if you touch titanium to titanium, you're gonna weld it together. So how this is gonna work is we would, once everything's been etched and rinsed, we'd bring it right over right away and dunk it into the solution. And notice it's not touching the titanium plate here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna have your ground, okay, your negative, on this end touching the plate. And you're, you're gonna have your, your lead, your positive, going to the other side. And when you turn this on, that's gonna be the actual circuit. It's gonna be flowing through the titanium, through the medium, which is the solution, the bath that it's soaking in, and transfer through and back out through the negative, the ground here. And that current, that process, depending on the voltage level, is going to determine the color in which you anodize the titanium. And a little side note about anodizing the titanium, you're not actually changing the color of the titanium itself, you're creating a layer over the outside of the titanium. And that layer, depending on its thickness and the way it's, it's built, is going to change the way light reflects back off of it to your eye. And the way that layer builds on top of it, its thickness and everything, is going to determine what color it is. So that's how that works. You're not actually like staining this any color. And the reason why we're using titanium wire is, again, we want this to all be um, conductive and transfer that voltage through in one circuit. So you'll actually, you might be able to see, I don't know about the lighting, but you'll see different colors on here because I've done different anodization. So that's, in a nutshell, how the process works. Um, as far as protecting some of the threading and these holes, um, I'm going to clean all of this off with some alcohol first, and then we'll paint this up and get it ready to actually be etched. Okay, everyone, so I'm back. I got this uh, nail polish all done. I don't know if you can see that, but basically... I covered up all of the areas that are going to be threaded into by screws, all of the holes that I want to maintain tolerances to, the uh, ball bearing that we have here. I covered that up with nail polish both sides because I don't want any steel exposed. And then what I did, I coated in here, um, this is the lanyard hole. I coated in there as well, but then I scraped out the top portion because you need to have titanium to titanium contact. So you don't want to, you basically want to find one hole that you're going to be able to loop this titanium wire through, right? So that way when you do loop it through there, it'll actually be touching titanium to titanium and not be um, blocked by the coat of nail polish. That way the current will flow through so this whole process works. So um, I did this on, on both of the scales or liners rather and um, also on the, the bolster portion of the titanium. I have done the same thing. Like I said, I scraped the inside there so it's exposed titanium but the rest of it's coated. And let me just hook this up here. Actually like that and we're gonna go soak it in the etching solution the multi-etch I already got one in there going all right like I said I'm gonna let that cook soak for probably like an hour and then you will just bring it right over into the clean rinse in the middle there and then I'm gonna move it over very quickly to the soap anodized solution and what we should get in the end is something I'm doing blue this time. Um, and you know, I said earlier that this doesn't anodize very well. It did this time. It's very blue. I don't know if you can really see that, but it is very blue. It did very well, and I really soaked it for a lot longer this time when that, that etching solution. <clears throat> and it turned out really well. It really picked up some good color. Again, blue. So yeah. So I guess the trick is to make sure you're really letting your titanium 
etch in the multi-etch for a long time. That'll help a lot. Uh, so I'll come back after um, the bolster titanium has been etched for a while. I'll show you the actual transition over to the anodize and watch the color change and everything. And then we'll do the same thing with the, the liners here as well. And uh, I'll be right back. Okay, so basically, I'm only going to do one at a time here, but these have been soaking, I think, probably for long enough in this multi-etch solution. So what I want to do is I want to, um, if, and if it doesn't anodize very well, I'll probably just let it sit even longer. I think these have probably been soaking for about 30 minutes, maybe 45 minutes. Probably should wait for them to go for like an hour, but I'm getting anxious. So anyway, I don't want this to be out of a, a liquid very long and exposed to the oxygen, so just very quickly move it over to the clean rinse. And just rinse everything off. I want to get all of that multi-etch solution off of it. Okay, and then right into the anodizing tank. I'm going to just close this back up so everything else can keep soaking. Alright, so now I'm going to take the ground and I'm going to clamp it onto this side which goes to the titanium plate. I take my, my lead, my positive, hook it up right on this side and I'll zoom in. Probably not going to see any color changing happen. Maybe. <laughs> if I get close enough here. Don't mind the uh, camera movement. I'm just trying to get you a good view. Actually, maybe I can get the uh, anodizer too, so you can see the voltage. Okay, let's try that out. So anyway, I have it set already to about 30 volts. That's generally blue. So once I turn it on, you'll see it spike up and that piece to the left is automatically changing colors. You can actually kind of see that blue. And you want to watch the amp amperage right here. I usually stop it right at about 30 so that the color doesn't get too dull. And that's really all it takes. What I do is I make sure I just disconnect everything. And let's take a look at the finished result. There, now it's focused. Now I have a nice blue. Both sides there. Okay, so we have the final product here. Now that it's been anodized, I wanted to show you. I almost forgot to do this uh, final <laughs> um, reveal here because I packaged it up. Uh, to ship it out, somebody bought it. But this is the blue anodization that I was showing you before. Um, it turned out pretty, pretty damn awesome. So a really nice sky blue uh, on all the titanium on this Boker tuxedo, Boker Quake and tuxedo. And man, look at that. <laughs> pretty awesome. Really turned out nice. So pretty cool um, process. I like anodizing stuff. It's uh, it's kind of like technology and dorky science meets badassery when it comes down to doing it with knives, I guess. But or anything else that's weapon related, I suppose. But yeah, I just <clears throat> I love taking a knife and customizing it and making it one of a kind, especially when you have something like this uh, where you have um, it's already a somewhat limited run on these knives. They're really hard to find and uh, they're very popular and it looks really nice against the carbon fiber when you throw in a little bit of color. Um, one thing I wanted to point out, I made a comment earlier on about the the backspacer, which is titanium, and the pocket clip being a different type of titanium. I still think it probably is, but if you use multi-etch for a long enough time, it will um, it will anodize very nicely and get a lot of vibrant color. 
So um, just stick with it. As a quick recap, um, for anodizing using uh, reactive metals and uh, electricity, basically the current is what controls the color. So you, th you need to find a power source where you can regulate current and um, get your leads set up, um, get multi-etch solution, do a little bit of research on how to use it, hot or cold um, methods work. This was a cold method and I just let it soak for a good 45 minutes roughly and as you can see it works very effectively. So um, once you let it etch, use some distilled water to uh, rinse it off, put it in the anodizing solution which I use uh, TSP, you can use a lot of different types of detergents or cleaners uh, mixed in with again distilled water. You don't want minerals in your water so try to use the distilled because that can um, I guess you could say impact um, your anodizing process when you have electricity involved so uh, yeah but this is really it that's really all it is you just find that sweet spot kind of mess around with the different uh, voltages and find out what is going to be the color you want uh, so more to come just wanted to give a very this probably isn't like the best tutorial kind of just a, an overview on how to anodize titanium and reactive metals so thanks for watching and I hope you found this to be interesting